my name is Julie Shea. I'm a nurse practitioner at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, and I work for the Cardiac Arrhythmia Service, caring for patients with atrial fibrillation. As a patient with atrial fibrillation, or if you have a family member with atrial fibrillation, you may have questions about how the COVID-19 virus may affect you. Right now, we don't have enough data to tell whether atrial fibrillation or any other abnormal heart rhythm problems put an individual at higher risk. What's important to note is that certain underlying medical conditions may increase your risk. So things such as your age, if you're 60 years of older, or as the CDC says, 65 years of older, and you have underlying heart disease, hypertension, heart failure, diabetes, some lung conditions such as asthma or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, kidney disease, liver disease, cancer, all of these can underlying conditions can increase your risk if you were to develop COVID-19. And many patients with atrial fibrillation have one or more of these particular underlying medical conditions. The virus does tend to target the lungs, requiring the heart to work harder to provide oxygen-rich blood to the body. AFib is common with severe respiratory illnesses, so just having the respiratory illness itself can trigger your atrial fibrillation. To date, we do not have any evidence that being on an anticoagulant puts an individual at increased risk. If you do develop COVID-19, you should continue to take your anticoagulant to prevent blood clots. For those patients that are on warfarin, it's unknown if the INR will be affected. As with any acute illness, such as a pulmonary illness, where you may have reduced dietary intake, or uh, if you were to develop diarrhea, these are all conditions that can affect your INR. One of the things that you can talk to your anticoagulation provider about is timing of your INR tests. Obviously, the most important thing at this point is to socially isolate. So going out to a lab or having someone come into your home to check your INR uh, may not be the best option at this time. Another point to consider is point of care testing, which is a testing unit that can be sent to your home that works similar to when diabetics check their blood sugar. Um, a little prick of blood is taken from the finger and put into the little point of care tester and it actually will measure your INR at home. So it could be used as a supplement to monitor you during times where you may not be able to get to the lab. Again, this is something that you should speak with your anticoagulation provider about and not make these decisions on your own. Something else that you can speak with your physician provider about is whether transitioning over to a DOAC, which is a direct oral um, anticoagulant, also works well in atrial fibrillation, but uh, does not require frequent testing as uh, does when you're on warfarin. So you could consider uh, talking with your healthcare provider about possibly switching to that medication. And again, uh, just to reiterate, it's always important to discuss any medication change or blood test change uh, with your provider before making that decision. And lastly, make sure that you are up to date on your influenza and pneumococcal vaccinations. So I'd like to thank you for spending five minutes with me today. Hopefully this will answer some some of your questions. Please stay safe and stay well. Thank you.